Welcome to the old Classic Car channel. In this video, I've picked out some photographs taken at the recent Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show held at the NEC. And to begin with, we've got this black Austin Allegro estate. This takes me back to the 1970s. A friend of mine's mum bought one of these brand new bright orange car. And I always thought these were a bit happier looking than the saloon on which they were based. Let me know in the comments if you agree. And talking of classic estate cars, we've got this wonderful, wonderful two-tone Humber Super Snipe. I was really surprised how high the load floor is in the back of this particular car. Fantastic machine. Now the real rarity is this one-off factory-built Triumph Vitesse Coupe that ended up going to France and spent most of its life over there before being repatriated in the last couple of years or so. Supercar, very original. The restoration show is great for original cars, but that's not to say there aren't restored cars, including this wonderful Opel Manta. This reminds me of a car another neighbour of ours had that I used to clean back in the 70s to make some extra pocket money. Another barn find here, this is a Wolseley 680. Fantastic car from the early to mid 1950s. The main body shell is that of the Morris Oxford MO, with a longer front and a proud ra uh, Wolseley radiator on the front. And over in the auction area were many, many Land Rovers, including MZ9123. This is a 1950 Series 1, and it sold for £14,400. Very much a barn find Land Rover if ever I've seen one. Not a barn find in any way is this glorious 1924 Sunbeam Tourer. Fantastic, very original looking car, apart from those flashing indicators. Uh, very, very nice to see pre-war cars at any of these big national classic car shows. As I said, many cars are restored that are on display, including this wonderful Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. The mirror underneath shows just how well finished the underside of the car is. We're one or two classic caravans in evidence as well. This is a pre-war 1930s Winchester complete with leaded glass, another picnic set there, absolutely wonderful. On the same stand, slightly later in date, probably late 1940s at a guess, is this fantastic little Willoughby caravan. I do love a good barn find, and we've got two photos now of VN6934. This is a Rover 10, uh, probably the P1 series, registered in March of 1935. Very much a barn fine looking car, very sound, slightly scabby paint, but that would just clean up beautifully. What a wonderful old survivor that is. Next up at the NEC, we have this glorious standard Vanguard. It's based on the Vanguard Phase 3, but this was the Vignali version, which was like a slightly modified version of the Phase 3 by the Vignali Styling House in Italy. This car dates to October of 1961. One of my favourites, I do like a Series 1 XJ, as you've probably seen, judging by the other content I've already put on the channel. BOW 236K, that's a standard Series 1 4.2 XJ6. Another favourite of mine, I used to run one of these, it's a Standard 10 Companion, the estate car version of the Standard 10. Very nice little car, quite rare being a four-door estate, not just based on the van, but actually a bespoke estate car body. Next up, this was a bit of an unusual sight, Ford Escort Mark 1 Police Car. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars on display, so this really is just a selection of some of the most memorable cars that I saw while I was down there. CLK 247 is a wonderful standard Avon 16 horse saloon from 1936. I do like those proper cast number plates. Note the four with a little tail on the bottom, a little serif on the bottom of the four. Commercial vehicles were dotted around. We have, next we've got an Austin Morris J4 in the uh, livery of Renegade Race Team. Very nice, done up as a race support vehicle, complete with jerry cans on the roof and a spare tyre. This is great, the Frisky Club stand is always worth a look. And this is a Frisky Sprint, a one-off, uh, revealed at the 1958 London Motor Show. The more commonly found Frisky alongside, but these are just great little cars. WN7872, that's a 1935 Riley 9 van. Also restored is this lovely little Austin J40 pedal car. This was on display next to a race prepared Jarrett Javelin.
This odd ball reminds me of a car that used to be parked in the driveway not far from us back in the early 1980s, a Matra Marina, with three abreast seating in the front. Another dusty relic in the auction area was this Daimler V8 250 with a 2.5 litre V8 engine under the bonnet. Wonderful BMC camper is next, the Cotswold. This is based on the BMC JU 250 van, J registration, so late 1970 or early 1971, this one dates to. Over on the Jowett stand was this wonderful dusty 10 horsepower Jowett saloon. Bit of a work in progress. There are many exhibits at this particular show of cars being worked on, and you know. Uh, it's just fantastic really. Back to the auction area, we've got a Sea Reg Saab 96. This one sold for just £5,063, surely that's a bit of a bargain. The Simca stand is always well worth a look. Uh, there's a lovely Aronda over there, a silver one, but eye-catching is this blue Simca 1200S Bertone Coupe from 1967. Jaguar here, we've got a very, very dusty Jaguar S-Type. Please do not touch, the signs say. No dust at all on this wonderful Tatra T97. This car dates to 1938. Rear engine, of course, built in Czechoslovakia. Fantastically rare survivor. One of my favourites now on the Ford Sidevalve Owners Club stand is this part rebuilt Ford E83W van showing the wooden structure of the rear body. Very handy indeed. We all like obscure vehicles and this is another Czechoslovakian vehicle. This is a Velarek 16350 with a 350cc Jawa motorcycle engine. This one dates to 1965. As it yeah, could pass off as a pre-war car I'm looking at it. Next up, also from 1965, is a Morris Minor based van. Very smartly presented Reliance Scimitar SE5A, I believe. This one I've never ever seen before. This is a very unusual Ford Prefect based Woody, complete with an extra door in the rear there. Absolutely great. I love the curve of the rear body, even the rear doors are gently curved. In the auction area, EUA 735, this is 1937 Ford V8, and this sold for just £5,400, which has got to be one of the bargains of the day, surely. But no, there's an even bigger bargain coming up shortly. Anyway, Back to the cars on display, we've got a Sunbeam Rapier here from 1971. Very nice early 1960s Trabant here. Uh, this was the earlier shaped version of the car, they were reskinned slightly and made a little bit more boxy, but these early 60s ones were quite curvy, and I do quite like those. Back to the auction area, and we have this wonderful Bean van. This sold for just under £13,000. Many of the club stands at the NEC Restoration Show show cars being worked on, and that was very much the case on the Morris Minor Club here. Uh, there's a Morris Minor split screen being worked on over the course of the weekend. On the Morris Register stand, there are various various cars there, Morris 8s and so on, including this quite rare Series 1 Morris 8 Tourer. Looking somewhat shinier was this rare Hillman Husky Estate, based on the Hillman Minx, of course. Over in the Barn Finds display, We've got this fantastic Austin LD van in the livery of Folds of Camberwell, manufacturing upholsters. Fantastic car here on the Corsair Club stand. We've got a Ford Corsair Estate, 
real rarity that, it's a metallic silver, very practical, very rare car indeed. Another car being worked on during the show's uh, opening hours, we've got this Armstrong Sidley 2025 Landolette from 1936, a mighty Armstrong Sidley limousine, one of several Armstrong Sidleys that were on display. Got a Woolsey Hornet Heinz convertible here, Crayford conversion. Another auction gem, the 1934 Chrysler Coupe Convertible. Again in the auction area, we've got this fantastic little Moto Guzzi three-wheeler pickup truck. Another favourite of mine, this is a Volvo PV444 of the mid-1950s. The neighbour opposite to us in the 1970s bought one of these brand new, so that's why I've included this one. He had a silver one of these, a Toyota Celica. The work in progress, this time a Jaguar E-Type Series 1, showing off the engine installation and a very, very large radiator. And this magnificent Packard, 1937 Packard Super 8, sold for £5,000. I just couldn't believe when I found out afterwards that that had sold for £5,000. That's the price of an average Morris Minor. Next up, a Reliant Supervan 3. With a pre-war gem here, we've got a Ford Model T, the original Tin Lizzie. Lovely faded but oh so original 1960 Morris Mini Miner here. Last tax disc in the window there, February of 1981, that expired. Plenty of dust and faded paint on the Rolls Royce stand. This is a 2025 limousine from 1935 that spent 60 years sat in a barn and was bought recently for a very modest sum. A gaggle of P1800S's on the Volvo Club stand here. Various Jaguars in the auction area. Any of these classic cars float your boat? Please let me know in the comments. A rare survivor now, a Vauxhall Ventura, which is a posh version of the Vauxhall Victor of the early 1970s. Here's a real rare survivor. This is an Austin A70 Hampshire pickup truck. What a beauty that is. Really nice Carmen gear is next. Over in the barn find section, we got this glorious Jowett's Bradford ice cream van from 1949 with just 28,000 miles on the clock. This is set to be restored, but it'd be nice to think that that original sign writing could be preserved. I'm sure it could be. That is just a wonderful, wonderful survivor. Next up, a very, very shiny, very, very smart MGA Roadster. I'm not sure about the chrome wires, but otherwise, beautiful little car. Com 313, that's a Riley Kestrel Sprite from 1936. 
Also in the auction area, we've got WFV806, a much, much modified Frog Eye Sprite. A very, very sad looking Jaguar Mark 1. 2.4 or a 3.4 saloon. Looking like it needed a little TLC. I've included a photograph also of the description on the windscreen, which is a master of understatement. Um, an element of recommissioning is to be expected prior to returning it to the road. Some of these cars do start run and drive. It would appear that this car has been parked for years. Over on the Saab Club stand there are various shiny cars, including this wonderful Saab Sonnet. Another favourite of mine, Dad had one very similar to this, the same colour. This is a Beer Edge XJ, Series 3 on Pepper Pot Alley wheels. Perfect for a weekend away at a steam rally somewhere. We've got a Mark 1 transit based camper van, G Reg, so that'll be what, late 1968 or early 1969, that registration. A little vintage gem here, this is a Saxon, a little two-seater Saxon tour, complete with wooden wheels and no brakes on the front. Quite a rare survivor now, a Hillman Avenger Estate. Sporty uh, Daimler, or at least the Daimler with pretensions of sportiness, the Daimler Conquest Century Drop Head Coupe from 1956. Very unusual conversion here of an XJS with a lift up tailgate. To the barn find section, there's that Jarrett in the background, but in the foreground is a slightly crusty minivan destined to be restored. There's a bit of information about this minivan, 1960. Sixty five Austin eighteen hundred is next. Uh, another friend of mine's uh, dad had one of these, a Morris eighteen hundred S in this colour. So that's why I've included it here, because this brings back brings back quite a few memories of trips out to various places. Fiat, this is a one two eight sport coupe. A very, very rare survivor. I think this is only a second one of these I've ever seen. Very original looking Austin Maxi here, complete with lots and lots of handy hints and tips written all over it. Things to look for if you're planning on buying an Austin Maxi. Great stuff. There's another one that'll make Dad cry. He used to have one of these, a Riley RM Roadster, the really two and a half litre engine. Magnificent vehicle. A little pre-war gem here, we've got an Austin Taxi. Um, I would have thought the domed headlamp lenses are probably a little bit later. Uh, I would have thought they would have been flat on the early 30s vehicles. Behind the Austin, they've got this Beardmore. Quite an interesting little MGB here. As you can tell by the sign on the door, this is a London to Sydney Marathon Rally car of the late 1960s. Great that that one survives. Very smart Herald here, 1965 example. Just a few more classic cars to go from this year's NEC restoration show. Next up, a rear three-quarter view of a Peerage Jensen Healy GT. The engine bay, a very, very smartly restored TR6, but this one on carburetors rather than the usual 
Lucas fuel injection. Lovely Austin A40 based van here of the mid 1950s. Some beam alpine being worked on. If you went to the uh, restoration show this year, let me know in the comments which were your favourite cars. If I've included yours, great. Lovely little pre war Wolseley Hornet here. The Wedge Princess. One of the plusher models, I'm assuming that's an HLS T registration, so 1978 to 79. Back to the Armstrong Sidley stand, and we've got this sapphire. A flashback to my own youth here with an early Spitfire, this is a Mark I. The Spitfire 4 was originally badged. This one from 1965. Really smart Sierra XR4i. This is what all the boy racers wanted before the Cosworths came along. Back over on the Austin County's Car Club stand, we've got this super duper rare Austin A70 Hereford from 1952, drop head coupe. The bodywork was done by car bodies, apparently. A lineup of Range Rovers, there were many, many scruffy early Range Rovers in the auction area, and they all sold quite well, from what I can tell. And they round out this collection of photographs taken at this year's Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show at the NEC. Uh, if you've got any favourites, please let me know in the comments if you went along. Um, yeah, let me know which of the cars that were there uh, appealed to you most. So uh, thanks very much for watching and there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.